Okay, today I would like to introduce this paper Contrasive Behavioral Similarity in Backdings from Generalization in Reinforcement Learning uh, It is a spotlight paper in ICLR 2021st Basically, this paper describes a new technique for reinforcement learning to generalize across different environments More precisely, a new state similarity metric is defined with a contrasive learning embedding technique I think this is a novel and technical contribution of Bayfors learning generalization. Now let's begin this presentation. I will go through this paper in four parts. First is the motivation. Nowadays, as Bayfors learning technologies become more and more efficient and promising in many domains, the generalization has become one of the challenges that hinders its further development. Here is a very simple example. An engine learns to jump over an obstacle here. Even if it can behave well in the training process, once the obstacle is located in a previously unseen locations, it will be very likely to struggle. Such deficiency of generalization will no doubt undermine the application of reinforcement learning and requires expensive training costs for developing an engine. And then you have some solutions to address the generalization issue. For example, through data augmentation, the input is, uh, as, as stated in this paper, the input is properly randomized for engines to learn invariant features. In this way, the feature space can be stable, so the policy in different environments can also be uh, stabilized. Or by regularization, the technique to avoid overfitting in supervised learning in is exploited in a reinforcement task here, which turns out to be effective. In addition, the overall training platform can play a role in improving the generalization just by producing diverse scenarios as much as possible. In other words, we increase the size of the training set of not only the size, but the diversity of the training set, just like in the supervised learning task. But the uh, endeavor to uh, to deal with the uh, training platform will be much heavy for the enforcement task, I think. However, these methods do not take into account the sequential nature of the reinforcement learning they overlook the properties of the sequential decision-making problem, such as the similarity in actions across temporal observations. Therefore, this study assumes that engines should be promised to have similar temporal behavior sequence for similar underlying dynamics in different environments. And they propose to decide two steps, two very simple steps, to exploit this assumption. The first is to identify the similar states, and the next is to exploit the similar states. Now let's see how they decide these two steps. Before we first go through some, before we first go uh, go through the methodology, we uh, have a look in the preliminaries, including the problem they consider and the tools they will use. Uh, actually, they consider a collection of Markov decision process which share the action space but with disjoint state space. And the power cylinder, or in other words, the engine, has access to a collection of Markov decision process and it lends the policy that can generalize among those Markov decision process. In other words, they are starting a generation problem of reinforcement learning just over the state space. Uh, the first tool related to study is called pi by simulation metric. This metric evaluates the similarity of two states, like uh, the distance between two states x and y is defined in terms of the difference between the expected rewards obtained when following policy, specifically just as this uh, formula denotes. The absolute difference of the reward function in the in two given states are 
used and they also include uh, one Russian tail metric to uh, calculate the minimal cost of transporting transporting probability metrics from A to B under the base metric D and the probability distribution they consider here is the next state distribution at current uh, starting from the state X or state Y. And the second tool is uh, contrastive blending. For the any two state X and Y, we can highlight the similarity or dissimilarity of X to Y through comparison of X with other states sampled. Through contrastive blending, we actually can find the embedding that maximizes the similarity among items from the same class while minimizes the similarity of items from different class. Now let's see how this study is built of these tools. First, they have to identify the similar state, and they propose that the similarity matrix of similar state should satisfy that the similar state results in similar behavior, and the metric should go beyond the immediate choose action and consider long-term behavior. And last but not least, the metric should be flexible enough in application. So. Uh, the authors point out that the pile by simulation with this formula uh, is not reward ag agnostic, which hinders their application and is less robust. For example, in this case, the reward of obtaining a K is not the same, but it's not the same, but the goal of obtaining the K is the same. So the state the state uh, similarity should be uh, should be calculate accurately for these two scenarios but scenario scenarios but if you consider the reward function you have you cannot obtain the accurate uh, metric mm, to this end they propose the policy similarity metric called PSM they uh, use the policy difference to capture the local difference in local optimal behavior specifically the this t the DST here uh, is the is the global difference of two policy and it can be the total variation distance for discrete action space or the L1 distance of mean actions for continuous action space. And they follow the pile by simulation metric to use the one version pile metric to measure the distance of next state distribution. In this way, they say that they can capture the long-term behavioral difference since the next state distribution is considered. Notably, such form is very similar to the recursive Q-learning uh, Q-value approximation. After designing the similarity matrix of the two states in the context of reinforced learning, the next step is how to use it. The author proposed to leverage the state impacting to improve generalization, and the policy similarity metric is used for the for learning the state impacting here. To achieve the this goal, they introduced the contrastive learning along the original reinforcement learning task. For example, uh, this X uh, loss function indicates they. In, they embed the state here and they calculate the similarity metric and, and optimize the similar state, the, the distance of similar state by the contrastive blending. And this framework XXO in this figure uh, actually, uh, actually the, 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 the embedding learned from the contrastive blending is then will be used in the uh, in the part in the policy to produce uh, corresponding action, so the contrastive learning is uh, is used to embed any two state here x and y, and the uh, embedding is also used for the reinforcement learning process by this framework. So, in summary, the entire network is trained end to end jointly using the reinforcement learning or imitation learning in the offline reinforcement learning task. Uh, and this loss function is in conjunction with the auxiliary contrastive loss. So uh, this entire framework is end-to-end -end and 
this can be deployed in any in any task for improving the generalization. And the experiments of this study is very interesting and diverse, so uh, it, it gives me very deep impression. They begin with this case study, the jumping task, and they examine the generalization in three types of state space different from the one they trade on. Uh, actually, the training this state space is it, denoted as this T. Yeah, each T is related to a training scenario and because each training scenario, uh, because the training scenario differs, differs in the flow height and obstacle positions, obstacle position. So uh, the different T actually we are training the engine in different scenario. And, and this is the whole overall state, state space, including the training state space and the text state space. And the orange color indicates the, the task is, success, is successful. And so it's successfully achieved, while the black indicates that the task is failed, and that the task fails. So uh, actually, the most of the task in the most of the task in the texting it only fails in the texting phase. That, that's, that means that the generation is still a problem. But look at this figure uh, carefully, you can find that uh, the figure A, the Y grid, it can be regarded as the interpretation of the state space in training task because the testing space is, be, is between the training state space and you can imagine like this. Um, for figure B, it can be regarded as the actual patient, actual operation, or out of distribution scenarios because the idea here is are the training scenarios and all the testing scenarios are beyond the scope of training space space. So you can regard it as uh, regard it as an out of distribution case to test the generalization problem. And the figure C is the IID sampling, just like the tax procedure in the supervising supervised task. And intuitively, the figure B indicates the most bears is transfer is in the uh, most. Uh, the figure B indicates the most fares in the generation task because. Uh, the black, there's a um, more black rectangles than any two uh, starting scenarios. And this fact indicates that the out of distribution is one of the largest challenges in the generation problem. And then they vary the performance by comparing with other techniques. The results so that the data augmentation. Uh, data augmentation here is beneficial to all of the methods in generation. So the data augmentation can be used as a routine for reverse learning generation task. Besides, the proposed method outperforms the regularization and learning method with the pi by simulation. And so in this, this is the successful rate of each scenarios. And they further conduct a bridging study for the model. And what they consider is the, uh, the metric they use and the loss function in the country zeros. Here, the, the current indicates the different state similarity metric, and the row indicates the different loss function to conduct the country segment. And again, the, these two methods both are beneficial to. Uh, improve the generation in the text task. Uh, since this paper managed to exploit similar, similar state embedding to generalized parser in different state space, the author further visualized the state embedding learned from the proposed method. You can see there embedding can indicate some uh, nature of the states. For example, the state that define an after drum are distinguished in the latent space here. And they also tax the sensitivity of their method by generalizing suboptimal processes in the tax task. 
it is shown here indicates the probability to conduct the suboptimal actions. The larger epsilon indicates the worst policy to uh, transfer. As in this figure, the proposed method can be robust to the suboptimality of the transfer process to some extent. And apart from the jumping task, they also conduct two other tasks to examine whether the proposed method can overcome some distraction in the input feature. And for example, uh, the, uh, the, the, distraction, uh, the, the distraction in the input features is also, is also called distractors. And during texting, they will uh, use the unseen distractor, distractors to actually to increase the difficulty of generation. And through the comparison, they find the proposed method can perform better pro generation. And this fact demonstrates that uh, when faced with symmetrically equivalent environments, the proposed method actually can learn the main factors of violation and endure the superior correlations in finger generation. So uh, they, they can be more robust to the un unrelated distractors in the environment. In addition, Another task is to examine whether the proposed method can be robust to high dimensional visual distractors relevant to the reinforcement task. And again, the proposed method can present robust generation performance to the high dimensional distractions. And the type of distractions here for this task is actually the dynamic background distractions, it's the imaging based distractions. So in this study, actually, I mainly learned three things. The first is a metric to define the behavior similarity. The second is the method of the contrastive blending used as an auxiliary task. And the last thing I learned is that the generation over unseen out of distribution state is still in challenging, and maybe this is one of the future research solutions. Thank you.